Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. Right, Monday evening here in Australia, markets down again, three point three percent. Still holding above two point two trillion, which is nice, but only just will it go lower. Oh God, it's it's a scary time. And when we get onto the charts, I'll show you why. I mean, it's still basically the same chart from yesterday. So if you've seen my charts and you should sort of know but if you haven't welcome to my channel and i'll show you what i'm talking about shortly all right bitcoin dominant still just hovering around that 40 percent mark it'll get a little bit above it it'll get a little bit below it again the market is still really indecisive there is a bit of volume though again people are buying this dip but it's just is it enough is it fake sort of buying to get the market excited to then dump it even further so they are can the there's small pump and dumps and there's really big pump and dumps and sometimes what they'll do is they'll wait for it to hit a point and then they'll buy it and get everyone excited not a whole lot just a little bit because they got a big bag of it and they want to sell more and they don't want to try and dump it all at one time so they buy a little bit and yep pumps it up and yes they're going to lose some money on buying that but they got a big bag that they bought a whole lot cheaper and then they dump it even further down and then they buy a little bit more pumps it up and then they dump it even further down now could they push it up Yes, but the market's got to be right for it. And at the moment, there's just no news that's really going to pump the market up. So again, if you bought Bitcoin at, let's say, $8,000 and you're pumping it up just a little bit to sell it and then it drops down to like where it is now, sort of, you know, $46,000, you're still in crazy profit. What do you care if you're selling it at $46,000 or $47,000 when you bought it for $8,000? Even if you bought it for $20,000, you're still doubling your money. So that's what you need to remember. And I'm not saying they're going to dump it all the way to oblivion. No, but profits need to be taken. Taxes need to be paid. The market is just indecisive at the moment. Excuse me. So people are scared. So again, people are, particularly if they're really in profit, taking profits and that's my firm belief that that is what's going on at the moment there is definite manipulation it's not huge manipulation but there is manipulation because we keep going up then down up then down up then down and we're always getting a little bit less uh higher than we were before and a little bit lower than we were before so yeah again that's my theory i'm never offering you financial advice so you've got to make your own mind up all right again bitcoin price now it's under forty six and a half thousand dollars it's really kind of hanging on by a thread now to uh, the kind of zone it's been in and if it doesn't hold like when we get to the charts it should really bounce or it's going to dump i know that's not an exact answer because the truth is no one has one it's always going to be uh, an either ill-educated guess or an educated guess so you know someone just picking something out of their backside you know i like to think mine is a somewhat educated guess but you know Again, I'll let you make your mind up. I've been in the space for a while and I've been making these videos for a while as well. All right, and gas fees, holy cow, $3. We have not seen that in forever, so that is quite something. All right, we can see there are some coins that have gained though. So what's done the best in the last 24 hours? All right, Olympus Dow's up a little bit, but they were down previously. Yearn Finance, again, up, but they were down previously. So again, we've still got coins just playing this kind of game where they pump up a little bit, but then they drop lower. Then they pump up a little bit, and then they drop lower. And every time they go lower, every sorry, every time it uh, drops, it's going a little bit lower than last time. So that is the cycle that we're seeing at the moment. So still some gains to be had there, just nothing crazy. And the problem is, what are they going to be like tomorrow or in 48 hours from now? Are they going to go lower again? Because that is what a lot of coins are doing at the moment. Now, what you also need to remember, as I said yesterday, is a lot of these altcoins are still quite high against Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's what makes me think we're going to see some more downside. And what is going to pump first is Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, again, never financial advice. That's my personal opinion. So your dollar value might hold at some point, but their value against Bitcoin and Ethereum will really drop if they start to pump and then they will start to follow later. Again, that's just my personal opinion. All right, what hasn't fared well then, considering the market's down 3.3%. All right, Kadena just getting absolutely brutalized. Again, it was a coin that did so well. So it's down, Mana's down, Wave's down, ICP down, Aave's down, but it's still holding around that kind of 170, 180-ish mark. So I'll do another story on another video on Aave. I mean, I did sort of yesterday. The dollar value, it seems to be holding pretty well. 
don't get me wrong, it continues to go down at times, but it's holding roughly there. All right, basic attention token, Avalax compound, uh, Avalax, Avax compound. Look, Gala's getting absolutely brutalized. I, really, I can't believe I bought that almost at the perfect top, 78 cents. But again, I didn't put too much into it, so I'm not too worried. And Engine, one of my favorite coins, is quite down. So I am going to keep an eye out for coins that I really like and start to scale into them. Slowly but surely, I'm not putting too much money into any altcoins at the moment. I'm waiting to see what Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to do. But that doesn't mean like, you know, if Engine gets to $2, I might not put a couple of dollars into it. And then if it gets to $1.50, I might not put a couple of dollars into it. But again, I'll never be going all out until I, well, I'll never go all out, period. But I won't be going too crazy with any alts until I see a legitimate change of direction from Bitcoin and Ethereum, because they are the two market leaders. I don't consider Ethereum an altcoin anymore, but I don't consider it like Bitcoin just yet. It needs to have ETH 2.0 completely done and dusted without any sort of hiccups and issues. Uh, once it's done that, then I will consider Ethereum basically an equal to Bitcoin. But at the moment, it's still number two, but not an altcoin. I, I think the market is uh, directed by both those coins and Ethereum just has a couple more things to go. And then I can think you consider it to be like Bitcoin. But then we'll be looking for you know Ethereum 3.0 at some stage in the future. Hopefully, and hopefully that'll be something even better again. You know, when that'll come, that'll be interesting. All right, so let's move on. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. Now, what I've noticed is we have a falling wedge in the Bitcoin price. This is actually bullish, but you've got to wait for it to break out. So what it could do is, again, break out like something like this, but then come back down and retest and then bounce from there. Or this may still be happening. And look at this wedge, it does come down to around about sort of 40,000. Now that doesn't mean it has to come all the way to the end, but it may come down to sort of just around about here, you know, 41.7, 41.6 or something like that, and then start to break out. Or again, like I said, this is still playing out at the moment. So lower highs, lower lows, but at the moment, 46 is hanging on by a thread. Really, if it doesn't kind of bounce today or tomorrow, then I just get the feeling like it's going to drop pretty quickly down into this 40 range. Now, will it get right down into the middle of it? I don't know. Maybe it only comes down and just, again, we have a wick that just slightly kind of kicks in there. So as I said, have your buy orders in. Now, not financial advice, personal opinion, but I've got a buy order in just a little bit above this green line. So in case it doesn't get all the way. And look, if I you know buy Bitcoin at you know, $42,533, and it drops all the way to 36,000, I'm not worried. I'm not throwing all my money, as I've said before, I'm just buying incrementally, little bits and pieces, until I find where Bitcoin really has found a bottom. And then once it starts to make its move up, I'll put a little bit more money into it. But that is what I'm looking for. Now again, if it gets to here, if we really do get down into the 40s, and particularly right down here to 40,000, I think it's not too much of a jump for us really to then go and cover this CME gap. I think that's almost guaranteed if we get Bitcoin coming down, other than some kind of wick. If we just have a crazy wick that pushes down to here and not candle closes, but I think if we break below, let's just say 45,500 thereabouts, I think we're going to quickly find our way down into here. All right, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if the spot Bitcoin ETF approval, which you know, at the moment has been pushed back to around about February, if that doesn't happen, and that is then the catalyst to go up like that. Something to consider. All right, a couple of stories I want to have a look at. Grim Finance has been hacked for 30 million in phantom tokens. So again, just be careful with these DeFi projects. It's great to, you know, run out and get into all these new ones and you can make some good gains. But gee, if you're not taking your gains, you just got to be very, very careful. So many DeFi projects have been hacked. I've, I've lost track of how many. What I like to do is go and find the ones that have been around for a while. They may not be as Gucci. They may not be paying, you know, all the same liquidity and all of that. But if they haven't been hacked and they've been around and still operating, I would be having a look at them because they've got pretty good security. And in the end, security for me, is more important than the amount of gains I'm getting. I'd rather get 3% and know it's in, know it's secure 
than be getting 10% and, you know, maybe my coins are there tomorrow. Who knows? Don't get me wrong. It, it really sucked to be getting 3% when 10% percent's out there, but I'd rather a secure 3% than a sort of super risky 10%. But in all fairness, you know, I won't say a lot, but a number of DeFi projects that have been hacked, they have compensated their members. And so that's great if you're in a project that can do that, but it still affects the token price and the project long term anyway whether it's long long term or not then it's dependent on how the market sort of sees uh, that happening but be careful out there in DeFi. i love DeFi. i've got a couple of players that i really like and again ave is one of them synthetics is another one i haven't given up on that yet i know there's still a lot of fud about it and i'm not throwing a lot of money at synthetics at the moment but it is getting a lot more interesting as it gets cheaper and cheaper. I'm considering putting some more money into it. All right, moving on. This is something I want to look at. Now, Uniswap has had a fair amount of news coming out lately. So here we go. Uniswap introduces auto router support on layer two networks. Its latest upgrades on auto router are all about better pricing and guess estimates for its users. Now, this was followed up by only a few days ago. Uniswap version 3 contracts deploy on Polygon approved with 99.3% consensus. So I get the feeling like Uniswap's getting a little bit of good news at the moment. And let's have a look at it on the charts. Here's the dollar. It got all the way to its high and now it's coming back and it just seems to be holding here. Look where it is, excuse me, sort of holding at the moment. There's no guarantees this lasts, but it was support there. It was support there. It wicked a little bit lower, but it was support was support there it was basically an old all-time high so at the moment i think uniswap looks not too bad again i wouldn't throw all my money at it i would just you know just because it looks good now doesn't mean it can't get worse maybe it's got to come down to sort of here or somewhere sort of around about there who knows so you know from 14 dollars down to eight dollars that would hurt but at this price considering it's bounced from here a few times i'm thinking uniswap doesn't look too bad i might put a couple of dollars into it Let's check it against ETH. It's actually under its old all-time high, but what we, uh, all-time low, sorry. No, actually it's all-time low, it's just above it, but it's average sort of low, really. Once it gets to this red here, that's when I'm starting to think this is going to be a good buy. If you believe in the project long-term, I do like Uniswap, but again, I wouldn't put all my money into it because we just don't know where the market's going at the moment. But it's absolutely in my buy zone against Ethereum. And again, with all this good news, could be good. Against Bitcoin, not so much, but what we can see is it is finding some support here. And again, this is old resistance and support line, but it absolutely could come down lower. But again, Uniswap coming lower down here doesn't have to mean that it's losing its dollar value. It could hold the $14 value, just Bitcoin gets on a run and Bitcoin goes crazy. So Uniswap holds its dollar value at $14, maybe but it still pushes all the way down here because it just stays at $14 while Bitcoin you know, maybe goes to ninety, dollars $100,000 or something. So just because you're losing value against Bitcoin doesn't mean you're losing money as such. And then again, you need to remember at some stage, if it's a good project, it'll probably bounce back. So you just got to be careful here. But at the moment, I think Uniswap is not looking too bad. Considering the news that's come out, and again, considering the dollar price, it really has held fairly well around this uh, point. So I might look at putting a couple of dollars into Uniswap, but I won't be going crazy because again, I'm not sold that we're out of the woods just yet. And if Bitcoin is going down to 33,000, I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't see Uniswap down here at about $3, maybe even lower, maybe even more coming down here. Well, that's still sort of $3. That was about $4 there, down to sort of $3. But again, no one knows the future. It's always just a guess, to be honest. That's what it is. Again, a somewhat educated guess. But look, I'm no expert in TA whatsoever. I'm just going by things that I've seen in my time in the space. All right, that's it from me. So again, Uniswap's my pick at the moment. That's something that I'll probably put a couple of dollars into, but you know, not a lot. I'm mainly focusing on Bitcoin at the moment. But if you know coins that I like and I think have long-term uh, possibilities, I will throw a couple of dollars at them every now and then. And this seems to be not a bad place to put in a couple of dollars, but not your life savings. Stay safe, be kind to one another pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment and unfortunately i think we're probably going lower and i'll see you next time